Everybody in the population, the voting population, has an equally chance of being selected. It's because you, how are you going to do that? You, could, you only have their phone number, right? You don't. Know, it's going to be difficult uh, to contact people that maybe they don't use the phone anymore. Maybe they contact by you know messages or some, or something. So it's going to be difficult. So in the real world, when you when you actually apply these this concept, we have to of course adopt it to what is what is practical as well and take into consideration the, the effects of that. But the concept, of course, would be that I would like to, ha to have everybody in the population to have an equal chance of being selected so that I have a true random sample of the population. So this reduces bias and proves the re uh, improves the reliability of our inferences about the population. So estimates and confident, and by the way, just we'll get into this more in the future, but just note, of course, like with the polling, for example, if you only poll people that have a telephone number in the phone book, then a lot of people these days might not have a telephone number in the phone book or, or they might not answer their phone. And the people that are likely to answer the phone and have a telephone number in the phone book and are actually willing to talk to a pollster, you know, might have different voting patterns than other people, right? There, so you can see why there's a, there's a problem sometimes that we have to take into consideration when we're applying these concepts in the real world. So estimates and confidence intervals. Statistical inference provides us with an estimate of population parameters like the mean or the or proportion, but it also provides a range of values around the estimate that is likely to contain the true prop population parameter. So this range is called the confidence interval and the likelihood that this interval contains the true value is called the confidence level. So if I analyze, for example, a, a sample of the population, I can get a mean, a mid value for that sample. I, I can get the distribution of the of the of that sample. But then the question is, well, if I try to infer that answer to the entire population, how confident am I of the results uh, that I have? And that gets to uh, to be a kind of a more of a nuanced question. And we would like to lock that down as much as possible mathematically if we can, because because the level of confidence will give us a lot more kind of predictive power uh, if, if in the future. So for example, we might be 95% confidence that the population mean lies within a, a certain interval. So you've probably heard when you see statistical testings where 95% confident or there's a 5% margin of error and these kind of terms. Those are going to be more technical statistical terms we'll talk more about in future presentations. Right now, we want to get down the idea of taking the